Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we're going to have a look at the 10 games that got the best scores on the channel for last month, the month of course of July. We'll be ranking them from the lowest placed score up until of course the highest placed score for the month, although I say 10 in fact there are 11 games because two games got the same score. For a game to feature on this list of course we have to have reviewed it, so do bear that in mind if there's one you feel is missing, we probably didn't get round to doing that one, but there are definitely some very good games on this list, July was a very good month all told, and links to every single review in this video can be found in the top pinned comment if you want more information on a particular game. Ok which game got the highest score? Well, let's find out. In 10th place for the month then, and to be fair you know it's been a good month when this game is 10th, and that's Ease 9 Monstrum Nox. This joins its predecessor Ease 8 on the Switch, and plays very similarly to that game in most respects. It is again an ARPG, but this time you have the assistance of the titular Monstrum, a band of anti-heroes each with their own unique powers. These powers can also be used to traverse the city and find a variety of secrets. In terms of core gameplay, this game scored very well, and unfortunately it was due to performance issues that the final score was that bit lower than it would otherwise have been. The eShop price is also very high, albeit it is a pretty large game, but the physical version can be currently found for cheaper so that's something to bear in mind. A patch or two would really help this game out, but as it stands, it got a switch up score of 75%. In 9th place then was Mario Golf Super Rush. This is the first Mario Golf game since World Tour for the 3DS and the first on a home console since Toadstool Tour on the GameCube way back in 2003. The actual golf in here is a lot of fun and there are a few other modes such as the new Speed Golf and the Battle Mode which can be played online. There is also the Story Mode which lasts for around 5 hours and definitely enhances the package. The main issue, as it currently stands, is the game is just too light on content, considering it uses Nintendo's usual pricing policy. There are free updates promised, which will pad out the experience in much the same way that Nintendo did with both Mario Tennis and Splatoon 2, so in the future this may well be worth the price, but as it currently stands, it got a switch up score of 76%. In 8th place was Neo The World Ends With You. This is the long awaited sequel to a game that released on the DS back in 2007 and much like its predecessor is an ARPG set in modern day Tokyo. Gameplay wise the combat system used in that original made use of the DS's dual screen function. Here we instead have a multi character system where each button press switches to another of your characters and the unique attack they have based on the pin you have assigned to them. It's more in depth than it initially appears and button mashing will only get you so far. It does feel a bit clunky, mainly down to a few camera issues in battle but was satisfying to participate in once you got the hang of it. The other main issue really was the amount of cutscenes that do start to intrude on the gameplay, although this doesn't take away from the story itself which is well told and full of likeable characters. All in all a very good game and one that fans of the series will no doubt absolutely love and it got a switch up score of 82%. In joint 7th place then we have Samurai Warriors 5, the latest of Koi Tecmo's Musu games to hit the Switch and this particular entry acts as a reboot of sorts to the Samurai series which focuses on the Sengoku period and this one specifically follows Nobunaga Oda and Mitsuhide Akechi. There is a story mode as well as what's called a citadel mode which is almost like a tower defence game. Throughout the chapters of story mode you will be levelling up your characters and equipping weapons which can also be upgraded. There were a few performance issues when playing in co-op mode, but on the whole this entry seems to refine and even reinvigorate the series to an extent and it got a switch up score of 83%.
Also then at joint 7th place was The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, a remaster of the 2011 Wii game and the second first party Nintendo game on this list this month. This new version added a few quality of life features, namely the inclusion of button controls as opposed to that original that forced motion controls on you and skippable cutscenes as well as toning down how intrusive to the gameplay companion character Fee is. It also arguably has one of the best stories of any game in a Zelda series and some fantastic dungeons. Whether this warrants the £50 price to those that have played it before is another matter and not only is it the second Nintendo game on the list this month but it's the second Nintendo game to fall down on value. A very good game in its own right but perhaps more could have been added to the package and it got a switch up score of 83%. Coming in at number 6 was Fuga Melodies of Steel. This shares more than a few similarities to something like the Advance Wars series in terms of its combat, but does have a few other ideas including the bond system between characters. You may need to switch other characters in at times to man the gun turrets on your tank and the relationships they have forged with each other through the story segments will influence their performance. With a unique art style and a story that uses anthropomorphic animals to tell a tale based around World War II, there is an incredible amount of charm to match the action. Some of the hand-drawn portraits do not fare as well as others and it does get a bit repetitive later in the game, but on the whole it got a switch up score of 84%. In 5th place was Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin, which is a turn-based RPG set in Capcom's popular Monster Hunter universe. I really liked how they incorporated so many elements that make the Monster Hunter series one of my favourite of all time into this turn-based format, with the different weapon types and armour available to forge and upgrade. The turn-based battles themselves are also a lot of fun. Initially they seemed a little bit basic, adopting a rock paper scissors style, but it does become more nuanced as you get further in with monsters changing their style up mid-battle and you needing to potentially call on other monsters to assist you. This leads nicely into the monster collecting part of the game, with the exit you find hatching and these monsters then joining your team. A few minor performance issues were unfortunate, but in no way did it hamper my enjoyment of the game and it got a switch up score of 86%. Next was Crystals, which is a game that has been on the coming soon page of the eShop for a really long time and it's now finally out. Yet another RPG, it's been a very heavy month for that genre it seems, this one boasts an interesting time shifting mechanic and a beautiful art style. In terms of that time mechanic then, well you can use it to send enemies into the past or into the future. Past versions may be little more than infants and therefore incredibly weak, whilst future versions may be old and unable to battle effectively. You can also send items that have a delay of a few turns into the future to use them instantly. It's a very clever system and allows the game to stand out amongst the competition. One negative was the load times which can become a real chore, especially if you are loaded into a battle and then want to flee from it, you then have to sit through another load screen, and there are a huge number of random battles just to exacerbate this problem further. There were also a few bugs that definitely need patching out, but the positives do outweigh the negatives, very much so, and it got a switch up score of 87%. In third place for the month was Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights. This is a Metroidvania which has drawn a few comparisons to genre heavy hitter Hollow Knight, and whilst not quite at that level, it definitely does enough to stand shoulder to shoulder with some of the best Metroidvanias already on the Switch. It follows the tropes of the genre in terms of gaining abilities that allow you to move further through the world, and this is wrapped in quite a macabre visual art style, although occasional stutters do hamper this a tad. It also has a beautiful soundtrack that almost demands to be listened to with headphones when playing in handheld mode. It represents decent value for money too, as some of your choices do affect the ending that you'll get, meaning, of course, there's scope for more than one playthrough. 
it got a very impressive switch up score of 88%. Coming in in second place, quite a surprise for the month, this was Boomerang X. This is a first person arena fighter where you must use your boomerang weapon to take down waves of enemies in a variety of different arenas. These become more elaborate as you move on and the game does a good job of giving you new moves as you progress and there is a real sense of verticality to combat due to the way that you can throw your boomerang and then phase towards it. This leads to some fun, intense and visceral combat. Moments of frustration may mar the experience depending on your tolerance for such things, but finally overcoming a difficult area is immensely satisfying. Devolver Digital really do seem to have a great eye when it comes to games that they publish, and this was definitely another winner in that respect, and it got a switch up score of 89%. And in first place for the month was Eldest Souls. This is described by the developers themselves as a boss rush game, although it does have a world built around these boss encounters with items and NPCs explaining the lore as you make your way to each point. The boss encounters themselves are brutal with you needing to dodge and attack, checking your stamina bar in the meantime, and there is an interesting mechanic whereby your heavy attacks and your ability to refill your health are intrinsically linked. You can choose from three different class types and finding crystals allows you to integrate them into your build and gain new abilities. Being a Souls-like, it has the potential to be incredibly frustrating and just won't be for everyone, but those that very much enjoy such games will find huge satisfaction in persevering and finally coming out on top. Visuals and audio in particular do a fantastic job of building the atmosphere and with a new game plus mode to try too, there's a lot to keep people returning once they finish that initial playthrough. A very pleasant surprise, this got a switch up score of 90%. So there we have it then, there are the best scoring games for the month of July. Considering some of the games that came out, it's actually quite an interesting top three, I'm sure you'll agree. Please do let us know if you picked any of these games up, did you enjoy them? Let us know your thoughts about them in the comment section below, or if you picked up any other game that we didn't review, again, just let people know about it if it's worth picking up. Just a final reminder as well of course that the links to all of these reviews are in the top pinned comment if you do want to watch them in their entirety and get the full story. A huge thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.